Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 9.6, Techniques for Solving Equations and Inequalities. Okay, so basically we're going to be looking at some questions where we can't really solve this algebraically, or maybe we can, it depends. Uh, sometimes we have to use a graphing calculator for this. So one of the ways that we can do this is to use the zeros, so, um, or a zero if there's only one. For example, if I have cos pi over 2x equals x, then I'll have to graph y equals cos pi over 2x minus x like that and find the zeros of this um, and that would be our solution okay the other way that we can do it is we can graph uh, y equals cos pi over 2x and y equals x and find the points of intersection between these two so those are our two techniques to find it um, so you can see here that we have the graph of cos pi over 2x and y equals x and we just find the point of intersection there uh, so the answer is I think it was 0 0.56 or something like that so you just use a graphing calculator in order to do that uh, if they give you the graphs then you can estimate the point we know it's greater than uh, greater than 0.5 so 0 0.56 sounds pretty reasonable um, and that's all you have to do. So it's actually uh, kind of simple because you're just typing into the calculator. So for the next question, we have f of x equals 4 log x plus 1 and g of x equals x minus 1. We want to know when f of x is greater than g of x. And again, we're going to use the POI or we're going to find zeros. Um, and it depends whether or not you want to have it on two sides or you want to have it on one side. Move it all over. So f of x greater than g of x. We could graph uh, y equals for log x plus 1 and y equals uh, x plus, sorry, x minus 1 and just find the point of intersection um, or the other thing that we can do is we can do f of x is greater than g of x so we're going to do f of x is for log x plus 1 um, and g of x is x minus 1 so we'll move it over we'll get 4 log x plus 1 minus x minus 1. Make sure you use the distributed property when you're doing it greater than 0. So we want to know when it's positive in the graph, okay? So I'm actually going to do that on a graphing calculator, so I'm going to cut to that and then I will come back to you. Okay, so you can see that I've already written one of the functions and I'm just writing the other one. We're going to press y equals to write these in and then press graph to find the graphs and it graphs it for you. And then we're going to go to second and then calc in order to find the point of intersection. And uh, so that's number five. And we just want to know when the curvy one is above the other one. So it asks us for the two graphs and a guess because you can see we have two points of intersection. So we want to choose the one that is correct. And uh, it gives us the x value. The x value is the important one. The y value isn't as important. We'll perform it again. Um, choose the same two curves. And we'll move our guess over a little bit to um, try to get the other point of intersection so we don't just get the same one for the second time. And um, so you can see it's given me the next x, in the next x value. And uh, it's going to be in between those values because we want the upper one, the curvy one, to be above the straight one, right? f of x should be above g of x. Um, so now we can do it with the zeros as well. So you can see that I've erased the second graph and just typing in minus uh, g of x, which is x minus 1. And we graph it again, and we're going to use second calc again in order to find the zeros this time. And we want to know when it's positive, okay? So we're finding the zeros, and then we want to be in between those two zeros because you can see it's above the graph uh, in between the zeros. So it asked me for my left bound and my right bound. It just means on the left side of the zero and then on the right side of the zero. And it asks us for a guess, but if you give it the right bounds, as in you give it the right um, end points, then you should be able to find the correct zero. And so again, on the left, I want to just pick a point on the left of it. And I'm going to move over all the way to the right. I'm doing past that zero right now. And I'm going to click zero to find the right bound. That's the right um, the right end point and uh, guess it and then it gives us another value. You can see that the x values were exactly the same whether I'm finding the point of intersection or the um, or the or not, okay? And if you want to download the calculator, I do have the ROM on the website. So you can go and download the zip file, unzip it, and run the executable file. And you should be able to use that graphing calculator as well, exactly the same as I have right there. And um, so sometimes we just have to use a graphing calculator to find the answer because it's too complicated. Um, we have one more question. 
Example C, the average price of a condo in Toronto was 144441 in 2001 and increased by 6.6% .6 each year. A new condo in Regina costs $72,500 on average, but the prices were going by 10% per year there. If these trends continue, when will a new condominium in Regina be the same price as one in Toronto? So this was a long time ago, so this is a really cheap price um, based on today's standards. Um, so for this question, we can actually do this without a graphing calculator. We do need to model it. So the price in Toronto, $144,441, and increases by 1.066 per year, so to the n. And I'll say let n be years after 20, 2001. We do want to have let statements. And we want that to be equal to 72,500 times the growth rate of 1.1 to the n. So now we could just solve this question, and it is an exponential question, just like we've been solving in the last, uh, in the last uh, unit. So 144,441. I'm just going to move the numbers to one side and move the exponents to the other side. Um, and the reason is because if I have something to the n to the n over to the n, um, like this, a over b to the n is going to be equal to a to the n over b to the n, so I can uh, compress it back in like that. So this is going to be 1.1 over 1.066 to the n is equal to whatever this is. I'm not actually going to type it into my calculator because um, you can just do it all at once together. So now I have uh, one thing on one side and one thing on the other side with a to the n, so I can use log. So the answer n is going to equal log base 1.1 over 1.066 1. of 144441 over 725 like that, and you just type that into your calculator, making sure that you use the correct brackets, and you should get approximately 21.95, depending on where you round, okay? So, if you don't round at all, you should get 21.95, and so this is going to be 21.95 years after 2001. Of course, we have to go to the end of the year because it's uh, compounding annually, so 20... Uh, 21.95 plus 2001 will be the year, uh, which ends up being 2023, the end of 2022. So, <coughs> uh, their prices will be the same, the same in 2023. And there you go, we have a word problem, so we're answering it with a word solution. So basically all we learned in this unit, or in this section, was that um, we can solve using zeros or solve using the points of intersection, often using the graphing calculator, sometimes being able to do it algebraically. Um, and that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please go ahead and download the ROM if you like, and ask me any questions you have in class. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!